Okay, in this screencast, we're going to take a look at the graphical method of vector resolution, or in other words, resolving a vector into its x and y components, or horizontal and vertical components, respectively. The first thing that you have to do is basically graphically represent the vector. In this case, you have 9 newtons at 55 degrees. I'm going to grab my trusty protractor, bring it over here, line it up on my axis. I'm going to make a quick mark uh, at uh, 55 degrees. Looks like it's going to be right about there. And then I'm going to bring in my ruler, and I have to measure out now um, nine, uh, 9 centimeters. So it's going to be a tricky since this little uh, digital ruler that I'm using only actually goes up to 5, or only measures up to 5. So what I'm going to do is make a second mark here. I'm going to call this point 5, and then measure four more units uh, along the same plane from there. So I need to make it up to here. Okay, so a little bit of extra time, but not a big deal. And so now I'm going to basically draw my vector ray starting at the origin all the way up to that point. I know that I'm at 55 degrees, and I know that I'm 9 centimeters long. Now what I'm going to do is basically add some construction lines just to help me in my sketching. I'm going to add one line down here to the x-axis, and also I'm going to pull a line uh, over here to the y-axis. And those are going to create 90 degree angles uh, with the respective axis. So this is 90 degrees and of course this is also 90 degrees or perpendicular. Those construction lines uh, help me to set up what will ultimately become my component, uh, components of the vector. So what I'll do then is starting from the origin I'll draw a line out along the x-axis up to that construction line and that ultimately becomes what I'm going to call the x component of my vector, or a sub x is uh, what the kind of syntax will be for that. Likewise, I'm going to pull over a line from here up to up the y-axis, and I'll just move that over just a smidge so that it's in line with the y-axis there, and I will label that as a sub y, or it's the vertical component of the vector. Now all I have to do that I've drawn this is actually end up measuring it with my ruler so, uh, and use the appropriate scale. So I'm going to set up my ruler here, drag it over here, and it looks like my X component is going to be roughly 5.5 centimeters. I'll write that out. I'll say A sub X is equal to 5.5 newtons. Notice that I'm going to also indicate that it's positive by leaving it blank. If we're pointing to the left along the negative x-axis, I would have to uh, then say that it was negative. The y component is also going to be positive because it's pointing up. I'll need to use this ruler again, although it does look like the ruler will be too short, so I, I might need to make a couple of marks on this. After I get it vertical here, I'm going to bring it over and uh, call that. I'm going to just ballpark this here. Um, and say, all right, this mark right here is the end, uh, that's six. And so let me go ahead and add a little bit more, and I'm going to get about 6.6. .6. So therefore, we'll say that the y component is 6.6 .6 newtons. We expect the y component here to be larger than the x component, and that's because the angle theta is greater than 45 degrees. It's 55 degrees. It's slightly more than 45. So therefore, the y component will be larger uh, than the x component. OK, so at the end of the day, uh, these are the two pieces of information that I need to extract from this whole process. I need to know uh, the x component, which is 5.5 newtons, and the y component which is 6.6 .6 newtons. And that's how to resolve a vector using the graphical method.